As discussed in last week's F1 video, Formula 1 ditched the turbocharged engine formula after costs and the amount of power became an increasing concern for those in charge. As a result, forced induction was banned after 1986. To prevent a clumsy transition, teams would be allowed two more years with turbocharged cars, but with increasingly reduced boost. The new rules divided the pack. Some switched to the new 3.5 litre engines more quickly because they were cheaper to run. But McLaren, Ferrari and Lotus kept running turbos until the very end, as did smaller teams like Zack Speed, Arrows and Osella. Osella was founded by Vincenzo Osella when he started racing Abarth in the mid-1960s. After stints in Formula 2 and Formula 3, Osella made its way to Formula 1 in 1980 with the Osella FA1. Between 1980 and 1983, Osella's cars were powered by the all-too-common Cosworth DFV V8 engines. But in 1983, Osella struck a deal with Alfa Romeo's factory team. Osella would receive Alfa Romeo's leftovers old engines and chassis, which significantly reduced costs for Osella. This went well for a while, but when the turbos arrived, the problems did too. For the first two years of the partnership, Osella's cars ran the 1260 3.0-litre V12, which the factory team at last used in 1982 before they handed it to Osella. Alpha, meanwhile, had jumped on the turbocharged bandwagon, but in a tale was all this time, the Italians didn't follow the example of what most teams had done and decided to go for a much more needlessly complicated approach. Instead of using a four-cylinder engine, like Brabham, ATS and Tormann, or a V6, like McLaren, Williams, Lotus and Renault, Alfa Romeo decided that the best way to go about turbocharging their car was with a 1.5 litre V8. This decision gave birth to F1's worst ever engines, the 890T. It was incredibly thirsty, it was unreliable, and to top it all off, it was underpowered. In fact, the engine was so bad that it drove Alfa Romeo out of Formula 1 for over 30 years. Osella now had a massive problem. With Alfa Romeo gone, they had lost their easy ways. Luckily, Alfa would still be sending over their usual crate of spares. The bad news? That crate included the 890T engine. Doing what they could, Osella soldiered on with Alpha spares but didn't score a single point in two seasons. In 1988, Alpha had had enough. Angry with the lack of results, the company pulled their limited support, whatever they had left, from Osella completely, demanding that the team stop using their name in competition. Osella obliged and renamed the dreaded engine. Knowing 1988 would be the last year in which they would need turbocharged engines, they simply named it the Osella 890T and hoped for the best. Now I need to talk about the reason I'm doing this story in the first place. As you may remember, the original Osella F1 car was called the FA1. Whenever the team updated their machines, a capital letter was added onto the name to denote the latest variation. So between 1980 and 1987, the grid had seen the FA1, the FA1B, the FA1C, and so on and so forth. But for this new car, for some reason, Osella decided to stick an L on the end of the car's name, so that meant the new car's name was FA1L. Yep, they accidentally named their own car Fail. And that is exactly what it was. It missed the first round in Brazil because it wasn't ready in time. It was then disqualified at the second round in Imola because the way that the engine had been mounted basically meant it was a new chassis according to the rulebook. And because it hadn't been crash tested, it got disqualified. It then did quite well in Monaco for round three. Osella's driver Nicola Lurini managed to qualify for the race, putting the car on the 25th grid spot. The race itself saw a massive amount of retirements, causing only 10 out of 26 cars to see the chequered flag, and remarkably, Lurini was one of them. Three laps behind Alan Prost's furious McLaren MP44, Lurini dragged the FA1L to ninth place. But after Monaco, things went downhill fast. Lorini didn't manage to qualify at Mexico and Canada, but the fun was just beginning. In Detroit, the engine broke after seven laps. A poor car, a drive shaft snapped on lap 56. At Silverstone, the car ran out of fuel on lap 60. At Hockenheim, electrical issues on lap 27 prevented a finish. 
the retirement streak was then broken at the Hungaro ring, where Larini failed to qualify. And then it continued. At Spa, the fuel pump died on lap 14. At Monza, the engine blew up after just two laps. At the Portuguese Grand Prix, Larini actually managed to finish the race, albeit in last place, seven laps behind Alain Prost. It would prove the last high point of the season. In Japan, the FA1L suffered a brake failure after 34 laps, and at the season closer in Adelaide, Larini once again failed to qualify. When you literally name your own car fail, you know there's going to be at least a chance it might actually live up to its own name, and that's exactly what the car did. Cobbled together from part of Alpha scrap heap, it was looking like a failure from the start. In fact, that's pretty much all it did well, living up to its own name.